Hey everyone, welcome to another MLM dumpster fire. In today's top MLM fails, we're actually going to revisit our pink slash purple hair favorite MLM coach, but there's also a Zaya rep and Zaya fell off my radar recently. I think I have not spoken about them in a good few months. We're going to cover one video from a Zaya rep that's called five lessons from being a Zaya active rep. So that's going to be interesting. Before we get into the video, don't forget to click the like and subscribe button if you would like to support my channel. Channel. that's a nice free way to do that as always big shout out to all my channel members i appreciate you guys thank you so much for being here and let's just get into it my lips are so dry we're gonna start out with reading a post and this post is about why you should start text messaging people to join your amazing opportunity there are no reasons why you shouldn't get started with text messaging in your online biz text messaging has so many benefits aside from just sending people promo texts number one you can use it to capture leads from social media so you can build relationships and protect yourself from a social media lockout shutdown or a hack which it makes sense like if you're overly messaging people on social media like if you send too many dms instagram is gonna ban you so like lockout shutdown whatever but hack really it makes for a super easy way to automate and provide customer service when people make purchases did you know that more than 80 percent of customers come back a second time when they have had a good customer service three they are personal many people that we connect with on social media see us as icons for lack of a better way to describe it that is a very bad way to describe it i don't think even influencers consider or call themselves icons let alone some mlm rep that has a small following on social media it's like me saying that i'm an icon for all the 600 people or whatever that i have that follow me on instagram and they would love a more personal one-to-one -one way to connect with you again maybe if you're a celebrity maybe if you're a reality tv star like molly hopkins maybe if you're an influencer even or something like that but if you're just an average joe I don't think people care, but maybe that's just my opinion. Fourth, and I can't forget to mention the 99% open rate. Yes, send 100 texts out and 99 of them will get open. That gives you an excellent way of connecting, providing value and servicing those that are supporting your brand. Well, just because someone reads your text doesn't mean that they're going to respond to it. I never respond to texts unless it's my taxi driver. Well, I have a taxi driver that I always use whenever I go to Croatia. It's the same dude, like support small businesses, right? Not sure how to get set up or what to say. I got you, boo, let's connect. So a lot of BS, like oh is people open texts they don't open all dms on social media but they do open their texts to their phone number but first of all you have to get people's phone numbers as well like if you connect with someone random on social media and you have to ask them for phone numbers so you can spam them with text messaging god good god like it's, it's just getting worse and worse isn't it next one's from hannah jade coaching and she says four myths about network marketing that simply aren't true we love a hand debunking myths about network marketing marketing. Social selling is the future and if you aren't monetizing your social media right now, why not? Multiple streams of income are needed now more than ever and it has never been easier to make money online. Yeah, but not through MLMs. I'm looking to help five people make an additional income this month, all from a free business opportunity. There's line number one. I don't know which MLM she's from. Let me see if there's hashtag. I didn't get hashtags. If you're joining an MLM, you have to buy a starter kit or sometimes you have to pay for a monthly website fee things like that so right off the bat she's lying to people it's not a free business opportunity no experience is required you do not need a huge following to succeed and you can start making money straight away all training and one-to-one -one support is provided by me i'll show you the ropes and help you to make the business what you want it to be. I feel like that sentence could have been better. Message me the word freedom for more information and let's get you making some extra cash this year. First of all, this post is very unorganized. It hasn't, like what myths did she debunk? She didn't debunk anything. She said social selling is the future. Is there a myth that it's not the future? Multiple streams of income are
are needed. Is there a myth that we don't need multiple streams of income? What? No experience is required. Is there a myth that you need to have experience to be an MLM rep? Because I've never heard that one. <laughs> this is the worst debunk that I've ever seen. All right, that was worth a fail. Now let's watch Zaya rep. I think her video is a little bit shorter. So we're going to start with that one and then we're going to watch our favorite MLM coach. So this one is five lessons I've learned as a Zaya rep. I've been wanting to do this video for a while now and it's just taking me a little time. I've been really busy and I was gonna share why I stopped doing and selling Zaya Active, but I'm actually gonna share you the five mistakes I made as a Zaya Active rep. And it really, this can be applied to any direct sales company, but really specifically for Zaya. Mistake number one was a big one was I just promoted Zaya. Like I was everything Zaya, my name, my Instagram account, everything I was doing, everything I was sharing, all the things I was just selling so much and making it all about Zaya when it should have been all about me and my brand and all the other things I brought to the table. People don't want to be sold to. They don't want it thrown in your face. And after a while, they know that you're just trying to sell to them. So they kind of space out. They stop following you. They stop caring. And so when I discovered this and pivoted and started focusing on my own brand, it was kind of late and the game and I had lost so many years doing the other thing. And don't get me wrong, I love Zaya. I love the founders, I love the clothes, I wear them every day. I will always be a big supporter of them, but I was promoting their company really <laughs> for not that much money all the time and I wasn't promoting myself. What, 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 what was that? She just said she was promoting someone else's company for not that much money, eh? Isn't Zaya a different MLM, much better than Savvy, which they don't say that outright, but they do kind of imply. Each one of them is claiming that they're better than the other one. Like, oh, we're the only activewear MLM out there. All the others are shit, but then there's just Zaya from what I know. But let's just appreciate that she just admitted that she was doing Zaya and she wasn't earning a lot of money, which shocker, eh? We all know that. We know 99% of people across all multi-level marketing companies never make any profit. So we appreciate when a rep says that, but I'm a little bit disappointed that she kind of just said it and she's not gonna talk about it a little bit more. But obviously she's a former rep. She's probably doing like MRR or some shit now. So it made it harder when I started to promote my brand and my own company to do that because I was so busy promoting somebody else. So my big takeaway number one is focus on you, promote your brand, promote what makes you special, find those really unique niches about you, and then you can sell other things like Zaya and make them part of your everyday you know, conversation, wearing the clothes. You don't have to shout out and say, buy this, this is on sale, whatever. The next thing I did that was a mistake is I bought so many clothes. Like that's all I did every, Wednesday new release, I bought stuff. I wanted to buy stuff. I was kind of addicted to buying things. I thought I had to, to sell the clothes. So I was just constantly feeling the need for doing that. And you know, I did finally develop a budget and a rule that I had to sell something before I bought something, which I wish I had done in the very beginning. But this is something that we always talk about with Zaya and Savi. They both, from what I remember, even Savi, they have new launches every single week or every two weeks. Zaya definitely has them every single Wednesday. And I think Savi was like every Friday or something. That is horrific. Like imagine, but they always like to say, well, you don't have to shop everything. But if you're a rep, like she said, you are going to feel that you have to have products. You have to have the new newest launches to make it interesting to get people to buy stuff and blah, blah, blah. I love this. Like she's exposing everything that I've been talking about for like two years. <laughs> you don't need all the clothes. There are so many great photos of people wearing the clothes other than yourself that you can share and, and show those things. But you just got to get rid of the pressure of always buying because then you're never going to make money. Like I really was spending my, my checks on the clothes. So I had to stop and refocus and say, no more. <laughs> I'm not going to buy, even though I love them and I still buy them. Had Another big one is I would ask any good customer of mine to become a rep. And I thought, well, I'm doing them a favor. They love the clothes. They can get the discount. Maybe they want to sell them and share them like I am. And so many of them said yes, which was awesome. I built a really nice size team. However, those 
reps eventually. So she built a very nice size team, whatever that means. I guess it could be like five people, it could be 50, it could be 150, but she didn't make a lot of money. She most likely didn't profit at all because she was shopping a lot. She was spending her paychecks on just buying more and more clothes. So they stop selling, stop sharing, stop even buying from me. And then their customers, I couldn't get back because they were technically still reps. So I really did this for several years. And then I finally was like, no, I'm going to have my customers be my customers. And if they seem like the type that would be good at selling Zaya, then maybe I would ask them. Or if they ever approached me, I would ask them. But I just constantly was trying to come up with new customers all of the time. I had to have parties all the time because of this, because I didn't have any customers. I was always trying to find new customers. So another big one was just stop asking everyone to become part of my team and just have them buy the clothes. Another big one, this is really hard, is that so many people you know are never gonna support your business. They're just not, and it's so weird because I support all of my friends' business. If they sell anything, I typically am buying all of what they do because I wanna help them, especially if I like the product and these clothes are really amazing, so I figured a lot of people would wanna buy, but very, very few of my friends and family ever bought for me. They never even shared, they never even tried it, which really made me sad because several of them bought from Lulu or other companies that were equally as you know good but more expensive. It just didn't make sense. Excuse me, Zaya is expensive as fuck. Also, do not compare Zaya with Lululemon or anything. I don't wear Lululemon, it's too expensive. Lululemon does have a reputation that they are a good brand. So like if you're paying a hundred dollars or euro or whatever for a pair of leggings, at least you're buying a good leggings, which like I said, I don't believe that personally. I always wear leggings. You know, I'm gonna be a maid of honor at a, my friend's wedding this year and I was talking about what should I wear because it's gonna be more like a casual wedding it's not gonna be like strictly formal and she was like I don't care what you wear just do not come to my wedding in leggings matter of fact I'm wearing them right now like you think I have something nice but <laughs> tricked you but anyway I don't pay that much money for my leggings and they're very good quality they're still on more expensive side because it's rider wear I buy my sportswear at rider wear just because it's expensive it doesn't mean that it's good and that's my point about Zaya. Zaya is on the expensive side. It's not as expensive as Lululemon, but they do like to present themselves as, oh, we are a luxurious brand. We're as good as Lululemon. And it's like, says who? Because the reviews about Zaya are not that great. Former reps would say often on my videos that the sizing is all over the place. You can buy two UK eights or whatever, US four sizes. I'm sorry, my American friends, but I don't know your sizing. <laughs> and you would get two different different pairs of like like they would be in a completely different size some of them were very very see-through the quality would be very iffy I don't know where they're pulling that they're as good as a little lemon I feel like I had another point but I just kept on ranting about leggings it's to me and I had to like let that go but it was a really big bummer and it really made me kind of depressed about the product um, so that was a big thing. And I completely got off the point. My point was, yeah, it was sad because your family didn't want to buy from you, but maybe your family couldn't afford to buy Zaya's products because Zaya is still expensive. Like I said, it, maybe it's not as expensive as Lululemon, but maybe their mindset is, I like Lululemon. I don't mind spending that much money on leggings because they are good leggings. I don't want to risk it with Zaya. So like if you had your own small business, your actual small business, I have no doubt that the majority of friends and family would support you if they can they didn't not support your business you know what i mean you were an independent rep for zaya active so it's not your business i would reach and say that they didn't support you because they didn't want to see you stay in this mlm for longer if you support and buy from reps that kind of makes them stay longer because they're like oh look you bought from me you're gonna buy again i earned some money some commission I'm just gonna keep hustling my time will come woo woo you know they didn't want to keep enabling you to stay in this mlm they probably knew that it was shady and you're not gonna make any money but you wouldn't listen because from the beginning you're taught not to listen to your friends or family a lot of people just don't trust you know direct sales companies they think they're scams which is really sad it's just a really impossible thing to get overcome so it's just what it is i and just last but not least and this is a very tough pill to swallow 
is that it's so tough to make money. I joined Zaya when COVID hit and everyone was home and they were on their computers buying clothes and I, my business exploded. I took off. I really grew a big team and I was doing really well. I was making some really great money and really could have gone, you know, tried to go on and, and do big things, but it was hard. Y'all, I spend so much time and money and resources trying to build a team, which is what it takes to really make amazing money unless you just sell like crazy, which is also really hard. And I was just in this rat race, just like always trying to have success. And, you know, some people had really great success and still have really great success, but it takes a lot of effort and you just have to be growing and all kinds of things that are really hard to do. And I am a serial entrepreneur. I work really, really hard. I did all the things it took and it still did not kind of click for me. So I'm just saying, you know, if it didn't work really for me at the end of the day, then it's probably not going to work for the majority of people. And that's just really hard. I can't remember the percentage of people that do have success with direct sales companies, but it's like three, four or 5%. It's not very high. And it's just something you have to realize. So those are my five. So at the end of the day, you just need to go ask yourself, you know, am I doing this to make a lot of money? If you are, it's probably gonna be really hard, probably because you're spending a lot of it on clothes and other things, and you might have another job and it just takes, it takes a full time, even more effort to build this business. Um, and then you just need to come to reality. Like, do I just enjoy the clothes and I just want to share them and make some extra money? If that is you, this is the business for you. It's such a great company, amazing products. People want to buy them and I have nothing but the best, you know, um, to say about Zaya in, in particular, but I just go back to the core of the first lesson. Y'all just market yourself, brand yourself, become your own thing, and then you can share other things. Don't be sharing other people's companies. And um, if I can ever help you doing you that, I'm here for you. Okay, I'm very confused. Like, is she still, she's not a Zaya rep anymore, but what is she doing? I guess social media expert or whatever. Well, she was close, but no, only like 1% or less of the people in direct selling, aka MLMs, aka network marketing, get profit, like earn some kind of money. It's one percent or less the 99 percent of people they never make any profit it would be great to see an income disclosure statement from zaya we can only hope that 2024 will finally be the year when they put out one but i highly doubt it because they like to claim themselves that zaya is better than other mlms and you can earn so much money it's different over there majority of them earn profit or whatever without giving us an income disclosure statement that backs up those claims that's shady to me that's a red flag because like if it was true and if people were earning great money with Zaya, wouldn't they want to show that? Wouldn't they want to flaunt that and give us an income disclosure statement so that we can see those numbers? That's just my opinion anyway. It's getting really dark really quick. So let's move on to the next one. Next one is Morgan. I kept calling her Megan in the past by accident. Let's see what she's going to talk about today. Hi guys. If you are watching the replay... Drop me a purple heart in the comments. Will you comment on this and drop a purple heart? Because I feel like I never do that on Instagram. Um, and it would just be cool. So uh, for those of you that don't know me, hey, I am Morgan Zambrano. I help people show up front row in their businesses. And what does that mean? It means that I help you actually lean in, take action, take control of your business, stop hiding in the middle. You need to stop hiding in the middle and like looking around and wondering if you belong. You belong. If you're watching this video, you belong here, okay? Um, and stop goofing off in the back. Too many people have been goofing off for too long. Y'all are goofing off. Sit up front, sit up straight, and listen. <laughs> um, hi. <laughs> Thank you guys for jumping on. Um, okay, so I just got a really awesome question on a coaching call, and I just decided to immediately jump on. I literally just ended the call and was like, I'm jumping on live on Instagram. I'm not even doing a dual live right now because I feel like this could be beneficial for you guys. Um, she asked me, um, how do I stop sponsoring people that are only in it for the discount? How do I sponsor business builders? Does anyone have that problem? Do any of you have the problem where you're only sponsoring people who are either signing up for the discount or who are 
signing up and like not really doing anything. Maybe they're signing up and they're ghosting you. Um, but that you're struggling with finding like the people who actually want to work in this business. Um, because I want to, I want to tell you guys something that I learned because I used to really struggle with this. I was sponsoring people who, um, were definitely joining for the discount. They were joining to get their kit or they were joining to get 50% off. Um, I was basically sponsoring customers. Like I was sponsoring people who were still just buying and weren't actually selling. Um, and I was sponsoring people who didn't really want to put the work in and who expected me to do all of the work for them. Does that, does anyone else have that issue where like you're sponsoring people for them to build a business but they expect you to do all the, all the work for them. They're like, wait, I have to post. I thought you would post. Wait, I have to go live. I thought you would go live. Like they're just like a deer in headlights, like shocked that they have to build their own business. How about that? Does anyone relate to that? <laughs> Cause that was me for years, you guys. Um, so here's the thing. Our girl is a little bit salty today, isn't she? You're attracting the wrong people with the words that you're using. And you might not even be realizing it because you think that by saying we have a great discount that you're like making it an easy decision for them to join. But instead what you're doing is you're attracting the people who want the discount. You're not attracting winners. You're not attracting business builders. You're literally saying, join me. We have a great discount. Join me. It's so easy. Join me. I'm going to hold your hand and walk you through the whole process. Literally, that makes me cringe thinking about it. Like, I don't want to hold anyone's hand. I don't want to walk anyone through every single detail. No one has to hold my hand. I just do the work. I just follow the steps. If the guides are there, point me to where the guides are, and I'm going to get the work done. I'm going to read all of the fine print. I'm going to follow all of the steps, and I'm going to do it. I don't need you to hold my hand. I don't need you to hover. Okay, I'm pretty sure we've watched a lot of videos by now from Morgan. I almost said Megan again. I'm pretty sure in some, if not all, of her previous videos, the thing that she says is, oh, I'm gonna train you through the whole thing. I'm gonna be right by you. I'm gonna help you, da da da. But then we get this video after that saying, I'm not gonna hold your hand. Why would I hold your hands? Here are your guidelines and build your business. Which again, if you're joining an MLM, she's in sent against. You're not a business owner. You're an independent contractor for that MLM. It's not your business. And yet for years, you could literally go search on Facebook and find probably a hundred posts where I said, I'm going to hold your hand through your launch party. I'm going to walk you step by step through it. I'm going to be there every step of the way. Of course I was sponsoring people who needed a bunch of help. That's not how you attract a winner. If someone tells me they're going to help me step by step, I'm like, then you have too much time on your hands. You're not out there winning yourself. It's just the wrong thing to say. Okay. <laughs> I'm like making fun of myself here, but that's seriously like you use words like that because you're trying to be nice and you're trying to make it sound like it's simple and it's easy and it's fun. And don't get me wrong. It is all of those things, but like you're just, then you wonder why you're attracting people who don't want to work. And it's because you're afraid to tell them that it's work. You're afraid to tell them that it's hard. You're afraid to tell them that some days are stressful. You're afraid to tell them that you break down your goals and then you have a breakdown when you don't hit your goals. You're afraid to tell people those things. Guess what? Winners expect those things. Winners are already out doing those things in other areas of their life. You know what I mean? And so you're just speaking their language when you talk about that stuff. So I want you guys to think about three different things. I want you to think about, and I would write this down, one, who do you want to Did you hear that guys make sure to write this down like what are the qualities of the people that you want to join your team do you want to sponsor people like i want to sponsor people who are very kind but who are also like who want to win who aren't weird about talking about winning like some people don't even like to talk about it i'm like i want to talk about all day long um someone said you don't want them to think they have to hustle like you hustle so it's a fine line but why is it a fine line? You know what I mean? Like this is the exact struggle there. That's the exact thing that I struggled with for so long. And it's like, there's nothing wrong with working hard and there's nothing wrong with wanting to attract people that work hard. I know you want to like, you don't want people to think that they have to work as hard as you, but wouldn't you rather attract people who do want to work as hard as you? You know what I mean? 
Like, I want to attract people who want to work hard, and I want to attract people who... All right, that's fair. That's something that we would probably all appreciate to see at least. Like, if you have to be in an MLM, at least be honest, and at least tell people honestly, hey, this is gonna be a shit ton of work. You're gonna be working in the pockets of your day. You're gonna constantly be on your phone, cold messaging people. And then, you know, if someone joins, at least you are partially honest with them, right? Passionate and who are positive. And so I have all of these words of that align with the people that I want to sponsor. So writing down the, um, writing down like the, dis- not the descriptor words, gosh, just writing down descriptions of the people that you want to sponsor and then writing down who do you not want to sponsor? Like what are qualities of people that you don't want to sponsor? I don't want to sponsor people who just want a discount. I literally don't want to sponsor those people. <laughs> And so guess what? I'm not going to speak to those people because I know that's a quality that I don't want. It literally doesn't make sense for me to say, I don't want to sponsor people for the discount and then make a post about it. Do you see the problem here? A lot of you are like, you know exactly what you don't want. And yet those are the people that you're speaking to. Even on my own team, like I, I have to stay in alignment. I really have to check myself sometimes. Because I do love everyone where they're at. I do. But I also want people to work and to not have excuses. And I want people, I want people who like don't complain all the time. You know what I mean? This is like kind of off topic, but I want you guys to really understand how this works. This reminds me, I had a video a few months ago where from her, Morgan, she was talking about her downline complaining, constantly complaining. And she started crying because she got really emotional about people complaining because they're unhappy and the business is not working for them. And it was a whole thing. It was kind of sad to watch because I personally believe that she's not successful and also none of the people in her downline are. And that was kind of just the first frustrations coming out of her so she started crying on one of these lives talking about people complaining i want people who don't just complain all the time but who take action so if i stop and answer every single comment that is complaining then i'm enabling the complainers instead of giving all of my time to the people who are taking action over their excuses And so I, a lot of the time, don't even respond to those messages. I don't even respond to those comments. I literally just ignore the stuff that's complaining because that's not where I'm putting my energy. I am not feeding the energy of the things that I don't want. That doesn't make sense. And so if you are trying to appease people, you're really just enabling them. And all that that's doing is taking time away from the things that you do want in your life and the people that you do want in your life. So that's a side note on leadership, but I... I typically literally just ignore the negative stuff. Like, I literally ignore it. Um, Okay, so who do you want to sponsor? Who do you not? Imagine if you're doing like a normal nine to five job or a retail or whatever, and you're a team leader or a manager of some sorts or something, and you have a person that's unhappy or whatever, and they're trying to talk to you and you just, you just ignore them. Wow, what a great leadership advice, Morgan. Jesus Christ. And she's like an MLM coach. She doesn't present herself as just a distributor. She presents herself as an MLM coach. And this is what she's says just ignore the people that complain great one morgan great not want to sponsor be very clear on that so that when you are sending your messages or when you're making your posts or when you're doing your videos when you're posting in stories you are talking to the correct people um another thing that i learned from desi lee this was a huge mindset shift for me and i have one more question for you guys as well but a huge mindset shift was customers want to buy the products Business builders want to sell the products. So it's a very simple question when people say, hey, can I get more information about your products or information about what you do? Sure. Are you looking to buy the products or are you looking to sell the products? Because if someone is scared to say I'm looking to sell the products, they're going to say I'm looking to buy the products and I'm not going to talk to them about the distributor discount because they're not a distributor, they're a customer and it's different. So if they're looking to buy the products, I'm not talking to them about, oh yeah, you can get up to 50% off. No, you can't. You're a customer. You can get up to 15% off. That's the max. Do you understand? I don't even talk about it. If you want to sell the products, oh my gosh, girl, you can get up to 50% profit. 50% profit, not 50% discount. It's different. You understand how the language shifts? So if they want to buy the products, they're a customer. If they want to sell the products, 
they can become a distributor. But that's a very simple question that you can ask that's like very quickly gonna clarify which bucket they go into. Um, last thing is think about the boundaries that you want to set with your team so that when they are joining you, they are also clear on, this is almost a different kind of conversation, but it's important. They are clear on what your expectation is of yourself and your relationship. So for example, I used to say, like I said, I used to say, when you join my team, I'm gonna walk you step by step through the process. I'm gonna hold your hand through the whole thing. I'm gonna be with you for seven straight days and I'm gonna help you launch your business. There are no boundaries in that. I literally would basically say, I'm yours 24 seven for a week. And so when they messaged me at midnight and I was annoyed, I shouldn't be annoyed. It's my fault. I didn't set those boundaries. And so a lot of the time, people are there's also different time zones and stuff like just because someone messages you at midnight it doesn't mean that you have to respond to it like turn off your internet turn off your sound and go to sleep that, that's a good point yeah it's i mean if you don't set any boundaries people don't have boundaries to respect so that's a fair point we feel like people are being too much and we feel like people are being too needy or too pushy or too anything like when they expect more of us than we expect but a lot of the time it's our fault because that's kind of actually what we said we kind of said and I see you guys do it all the time I hear us say like I'm gonna lead you through everything I have all of the everything and so they look at you like you are the everything you need to make it very clear that there are tools for them to learn from and that there is a guide or that there is a PDF or that there is a walkthrough. I am very, very clear in my verbiage in the last probably year that it's not me, it's something I've typed up. It's not me, it's a Zoom call with multiple people. It's not me, it's a PDF. And that's, it's important. It's, I am telling you right now, if you wanna sponsor the masses, it's very important because if you make it sound like it's you and then they join and it's a PDF, they are going to ghost. They are going to quit because their expectation was that they were getting one-on-one -on -one time with you like 24 seven, not understanding that you have a team of a thousand people. But that's because of the verbiage that you said and not the expectation that you said. Does that make sense? So this is kind of a higher level conversation, but this is something that I've learned in the last 12 months. And it's why <laughs> my first line is crushing it. And I feel empowered with my first line and I feel excited with my first line because they understand those boundaries. The thing is people understand the boundaries as long as we set the boundaries. The problem is we don't set the boundaries and then people push and we get mad at them, but we never said. So now when someone joins my first line, I wanna give you guys all permission to say stuff like this. When they join my first line, I tell them right away, I have a first line call on Thursdays and I do one-on-one -on -one coaching calls that you can sign up for. And I, um, I homeschool. I literally send them a message that says, hey, I homeschool. I usually don't answer my messages until noon, but even then, if I'm like on a Zoom call or doing a work block, like it might take me a couple hours to respond. I have no expectation of myself to message people back within 30 seconds. In the first five years of my business, if I wasn't attached to my phone, I thought the whole world was gonna end. Now it's like, I'm literally off my phone for like seven hours a day, like my phone is down. I'm with my kids and my first line is freaking thriving because they understand that because I told them and I communicated. Um, so anyway, so things to think about is who do you want on your team? What are the qualities of people that you want on your team? Did she say earlier what she just explained was a higher level leadership kind of thing when she was just telling people to communicate honestly the whole time qualities of people that you do not want on your team you want to you want to um oh my gosh attract you want to attract the people that you want and you want your verbiage to repel the people you don't want i want to say that again you want to attract the people that you want and you want to repel the people that you don't want. This goes back to the person who said, I don't wanna talk about hustle too much and push people away. I wanna push people away who don't wanna hustle. If you don't wanna work hard, don't join me. I want to repel you with my verbiage and that's okay. Does that make sense? Because if I have a bunch of people join me who are like very casual or laid back or like they're gonna have more excuses than hard work, like 
I'm not a good fit for you. And so it's okay to repel the people who aren't going to be a good fit for you. Do I love people where they're at? Yes. But am I going to talk to you and spend hours in messenger with you if you're doing nothing? No, I'm not. And so it's okay to repel the people that don't have the qualities that you want because there are other people out there who are going to go skip in a field with their team. That's not me. Okay. And it's okay if it's not you. Um, And then number three is setting those boundaries and setting those boundaries early. And I'm telling you right now, boundaries will create freedom and boundaries will make you excited to talk to your team because you'll be talking to them on your terms and on the terms that you have set and you will have set expectations with them and they're going to love you more for it. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. Bye guys. I mean, that was a pretty, pretty basic advice, but are we surprised? I mean, some of the stuff that she said is fine. At the same time, it's such a basic thing to talk about. Like, just be honest and communicate with people what they're getting themselves into or what you're trying to get them into. I don't know. Also, do you think... Do they charge for one-to-one coaching? Like, do they charge people extra for that? Anyway, I'm gonna wrap that one up here. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it this far, you're a trooper, and I appreciate you. That helps me out a lot. And don't forget to click that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the video and if you would like to see more content from me. And big shout out to all my channel members, as always. I really appreciate you guys. I will see you all in the next one. Bye.